absolute joy to see you. It is so important for not just Baptist Bible College, but for the Baptist Bible Fellowship to be together. Because the truth is we are better together. Every place I go, I spend time bragging about our students. And when I'm on campus, I spend time bragging about you. Pastors and missionaries and spouses and staff. And you make up an army of people that have come together to do something that's very unique in our world for Jesus Christ. And I love you. I love you for that. Our students need to see you. They need to know you. And they need to hear your stories. So I hope you get to meet each other. Uh, stick around. We're going to have a little party later. You can, you can get to know some of them. But I want to thank you so much for being here. I, I really, from the bottom of my heart, this has been a difficult year. Our world has had a difficult year. You have all had difficulties. But we determined a while ago we were going to have an in-person fellowship week no matter what. So thank you for coming all the way to be with us this week. Because this is a special week celebrating our 70th anniversary, I have asked our entity leaders to just, just talk to you briefly, not, not preach a sermon, but just talk about what is going on in your world. And so tonight, I'm going to share a perspective of Baptist Bible College with you. Tomorrow night, John Connorup will talk about our missions office, and on Thursday, or Wednesday night, Randy Harp will share the communications office. Uh, this past year... I do want to tell everybody, thank you. Some of you gave extra gifts. Some of you uh, sent some just prayer requests for us to, uh, about us to, to pray for us. But I, I'm so proud of how everybody here, every student, every faculty member, every staff, every person on our campus rose to the need and handled every situation that we faced. We had to change rules weekly. We had to change this and that and classes and online and all that, but with such a great attitude. So I, I'm so proud of, of your attitude and how you've handled things. And so uh, Baptist Bible Fellowship, I want you to understand who we're dealing with. Those that are willing to adapt for the greater good and doing what they can to make things better. I, I'm thankful for them. And I'm very thankful for those that I get to work with. Uh, they, they help your students, like Nate Harmon, who led us in worship already. And you get to hear him all week long. I'm thankful for, for those that came to, to sing with us and, and, and to play with us. I'm thankful for those that worked along my side in the finances and maintenance and, and that teach in our classrooms. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed with a great first lady here and all the help she is to me and to so many. Eight, we gather as friends, we gather as coworkers. But mostly, when we walk in this place together, we're brothers and sisters. This is a special family. It's a unique family, but it's a special family that understands one another. We are all here tonight because of Baptist Bible College. It is your college. It is your home. I hope you feel comfortable here. In preparation for this, this week, uh, like a lot of our speakers, I, I spent a lot of time looking back. Rereading the history, rereading the books, rereading the things that have been written. And uh, it's funny how many different opinions there are and stories there are of our founding. But think about this with me. What, what is it that BBC is supposed to be all about? What is it that we are supposed to be doing? And I, I thought about this, reading about our beginning, thinking about every decade that's been here. At our heart, what is it that we are supposed to be doing? This is it. Baptist Bible College is about preparing lives to tell the world about Jesus. That's who we are. That's the bottom line, and I hope that we communicate that message well enough to our students that they're comfortable going out into the world to accomplish that. This is what we have been doing, and this is what we will continue to do. And I believe this. If you are going to have a Baptist Bible Fellowship, you must have a Baptist Bible College. 
That's why the first thing the founders did was to make plans for a college. In his book, telling the founding of the BBF, Bill Bartlett explained this. The paramount issue when the BBF men broke camp in Fort Worth was the feasibility of launching a Bible school in three short months. Listen, listen to this. They felt a school was a primary plank in the formulation of a new movement. It would be the feeder that would cause the organization to grow. In other words, if you don't have that, that training place, that college, to educate and prepare pastors and staff and missionaries, if not, it's only a matter of time before this fellowship is gone. Please know, Baptist Bible Fellowship, you have a college that is committed to the mission of our founders. We are still doing that job. You have a college that has done its job to become the top of academic quality possible here. We, we have put so much effort into developing every aspect of what we do here. It's taken several years to get there, but I believe that we are ready. We now have people here on our campus, including myself, that travel. I want you to get this, because I don't, I don't know that a whole lot of us appreciate the importance of this. There are some of the people here, including myself, that travel on behalf of accreditation agencies now. They look to us. I, I've been asked to speak to other colleges regarding quality and accreditation. That's who BBC is now in the eyes of others. You, you have a college at your disposal that can be compared with any. With a mission and a message that you can be proud of, we have a quality today that you can be very proud of. I, I'm reminded, as I think through some of these words, I, I have the privilege to walk around this place and I can hear those voices. I encourage you to take the time. Step into the classrooms. Walk through the halls. I still hear the voices. The voices that spoke into my life. The Hunter Shermans. The Ken Howards. Another professor who I would guess that many of you had. Maybe you can hear it. In Dr. Sewell's voice, as he says, if I'm to have surgery, I want a surgeon that is well-trained, experienced, and the best in the business. If I'm to invest my money, I want a proven advisor, trained and experienced in the finance markets. If I have a legal problem, I want the best trained and smartest lawyer possible. And then he said, but when we talk about eternal souls, we often settle for less than the best. It's a convicting thought, isn't it? Why wouldn't we want the best trained, the best educated, the smartest, the strongest, and the wisest to do the job of dealing with the eternal souls of men and women? There are plenty of opportunities out there that don't have the expertise that we do that haven't put in the effort that we have, and that honestly can't do what we can do here. And I'm afraid often we've been willing to settle for less than the best. And I believe this, we will never do much for God if that's our attitude. If we are willing to settle for less, our churches, our homes, our fellowship, and our college need to give our best, our best minds, our best training, our best effort, our best gifts, and our best students. If we don't, we should not expect God to bless where we're headed. This week, I hope you celebrate the past. But I hope you experience vision into the future. Look around. See. Listen. Hear. I believe BBC is, the, is at the very beginning of a new day. Of new growth. We've done a lot of hard sacrificial work to get where we are today but I believe we're ready I believe we're ready to move forward I believe we're ready to send students into a very different culture today we have to we cannot fail at that job
Now, let me, let me share just a couple of updates and, and a few things that we're facing and then wrap it up. This has been a, a difficult year for all of us. BBC is in such a better place financially. We're so much better off academically. And we're even better off athletically winning the ACCA National Men's Basketball Championship this year. This past fall, we began what I believe is the next big step in our future. We started 100% online degree programs. You can finish a degree, you can get an advanced degree, and uh, I, I want to encourage you to consider that. This week, maybe you will leave here with a little bit of an encouragement or a push to consider that. Maybe there are some people in your church that would consider that. You can trust what you're going to hear. Many of our online uh, professors are BBF pastors, BBF missionaries. Uh, I, I want to invite you to come to a free lunch. Yes, it's a free lunch. We're sponsoring that at the, the Double Tree down the street uh, on Wednesday, right after missions morning. I, I want to invite you to come where we're going to just talk about our online program. You may have questions about it. Come and learn all about it. We'll be there to answer questions. And uh, those that attend will receive $100 off their first class. So there is a, a great opportunity for you. You can sign up in the back at our table back there. You can meet Shannon Mulford, our Director of Online Education and our new Academic Dean here at Baptist Bible College. Sign up back there. Um, we really, uh, we don't have that many spaces left. So let me encourage you to go and, and sign up to be a part of that. Today, one of the dangers that we face are the directions being given out by the new Biden administration. And I want you to understand where Baptist Bible College is. We have been threatened already with losing financial aid, the federal financial aid, if we do not comply with new sexual orientation policies. But you need to know that BBC still believes the Bible. Our doctrine is very clear. It's taught. But just know that this threat is not going to go away. In addition to threatening our federal financing for some of our students because of sexual orientation issues, they're also proposing free college. I don't know if you've noticed this or not. When you say free college, there are a lot of young people that go, oh, that sounds great. It's attractive to young people. It's attractive to parents. But I want to encourage you to have these discussions with your students. The public colleges and the universities that will be allowed to participate in this are the very places where young minds are taught everything they can about being anti-Christ, anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-moral teaching. That's what they're going to get there. So let me encourage you to take advantage of the opportunity to have this discussion. Baptist Bible College still focuses on the fundamentals, preparing students to be effective in a difficult culture for Christ. And I believe we are more ready today than we've ever been before. Let me close with this little story. Once upon a time, in a beautiful meadow beside a river, close to a little town, a group of friends was having a picnic on a very sunny day. They'd brought along a canoe, a frisbee, some good food, and some music. It was spring break, and they were all excited to uh, be out of classes and just hanging out. A young man named Jack and a young lady named Stacy jumped in their canoe, and they began to explore the river. Suddenly, Stacy, Stacy saw and looked what to be a, a person floating down the stream. And sure enough, there was a woman who had been battered by the river rocks and was almost dead. And they sprang into action. They pulled her out and someone knew CPR and they revived her and they, they bandaged her wounds and they called for the EMTs. They rejoiced that they saved her life. 
as they were loading her into an ambulance, the whole scene was repeated again as more people started floating down the river. And again, they called for help, and people responded, and again, more people came floating down. This scene kept taking place over and over. They continued to rescue. They called for more workers to come, and more workers came, and they set up an emergency tent city. Others brought in food and water. Medical personnel volunteered their time. Organizers began raising money. But the bodies kept coming. This small group of volunteers were soon overwhelmed, and soon not everybody that was coming down the river could be saved. This went on and on on. Days and weeks later, a construction crew showed up and built a more permanent shelter with more emergency medical equipment and some basic housing for the volunteers. Media began showing up to tell the story. And like normal, conflict happened. The leadership began discussing things roughly. The people who had been on the original picnic claimed that they knew the most about the situation and so therefore they should be elected the leaders of this new rescue organization. One suggested a name for it, another disagreed and suggested another name, and of course a heavy discussion took place. One evening, a newly educated young man showed up to help. He stood there and he looked at the situation of people floating down the river. And he thought for a moment, and he thought, and he studied the situation, and then he immediately began running upstream. The rescue crew yelled at him to get back and to help. The kitchen crew yelled at him to get back and help with the food. The builders called to him to come back and help build. The leader said, where do you think you're going? young man said I'm going upstream to see who's pushing all these people in the river why don't you come with me and help them from falling in this story teaches us that unless we understand the problem that unless we understand how to address the real problem there's no reason to put all of our energy into just taking care of disasters and building buildings and making food and having meetings I tell you tonight, that is what VBC does. That is why we sit in classrooms. That is why we hand out assignments. That, that is why we pray for students. We teach them to think biblically, to process what's going on, to study, to prepare, to plan. We teach them to understand the needs of a human soul, to seek the answer in God's word, and to share the gospel with the lost and dying world. That's who we are. That's who we want to be. That's who we've been. And that's where we're going. BBC is ready. I hope you'll join us. I do. I, I thank you so much for coming this week. Let's have a great celebration. Thank you for being with us today.